morning and welcome to the broadcast. We're continuing our series titled, God Specializes. And I hope you have been learning through this series because truly, dear loved ones, our God specializes in not just one area, but all areas. Let's open our Bibles now to the book of Acts, chapter 20, and we'll begin reading at verse 7. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep. And as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. And when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed, and they brought the young man in alive, and they were not a little comforted. May God have the blessing to the hearers of his red word. Now, I know you may ask, well, well, preacher, how, where did God specialize here? Well, we, we, we want to explain that to you. And our subtopic this morning with God specialized will be God specializes in young people. That's right. He specializes in in young people and and some of you older folks or adults parents grandparents uncles aunts y'all don't do such a great job and i invite you this morning to pay close attention because so many times god is working through the young people and He's working to get their attention. And right when God is going to do a great work, a miracle, when God is getting ready to transform their lives, y'all step in and mess up. That's right. Y'all get in the way of God. Let's note something here in the passage for we get deep into this lesson first of all if you have your bibles keep them handy there in acts chapter 20 we need to know two things in this passage we just can't run over them because you probably missed it okay first of all while the gospel was being spread, you know, we in the book of Acts, which is the history book of the New Testament. The gospel was spread from Jerusalem to Rome, and it started out, guess where? By attending synagogues on the Sabbath. And we know the Sabbath, which was Saturday, which started Friday at sundown and concluded Saturday sundown. And that's when many of them was having services. That's right. 
But look how God it, it was changing this thing. Okay. Because here in verse 7, look at it as I go over it again. Now on the first day of the week. Now, and remember, it was Luke wrote this, so he have an audience of Gentile and to the Romans. And he said that we see that the church met on the first day of the week, which is Sunday. And that's why we even today meet on Sunday. So that is in the scripture. That's, this is a good scripture reference. They stopped meeting on the Sabbath and they stopped meeting on Sunday, this being the first day of the week. Another thing we need to point out before we move on in the lesson. And I told you it was two things, just the second one. And that is, we see the primary focus of such a meeting, and that was to observe the Lord's Supper. You see it there in verse 7? It said that when the disciples came together, when? On the first day of the week, it tells us that in verse 1, to do what? To break bread. Hallelujah. And this one told my, you know, you bring in some banana bread or you bring in some of your, you know, your famous croissant. No. With bacon, egg, and cheese. No. He's talking about speaking of breaking bread, which is communion. Hallelujah. Praise God. This was the purpose in Luke records this here in the 20th chapter of Acts. Okay, we, we got that out the way. Now, now, let us look. God specializes in young people. And, and, and I know, I know I see it all the time. These young people seem like they out of control. Well, can I be on their defense this morning? Some of the reason they out of control fall back on us. We who fail, and what it, when I say us, I'm talking about adults. Now you can you can have your title, whether you principal, teacher, mama, daddy, auntie, grandparent, but y'all let them get away with everything. Y'all don't stop and teach them. Y'all don't teach them just basic things. No, you get up, you make your bed. So you, you got to teach them and have to have some structure. You got to teach them how to be disciplined and, and certain things should be automatic. No, when you get up, you make your bed. That's right. Yeah, you got time. Uh -uh, don't tell me you got to catch the school bus or your, your friend coming to pick you up. Uh-uh. Your room before you leave out of here, it better be made. Because I'm going to come in and check it out. And if it ain't right, I'm going to lay hands on you and I ain't talking about for healing. Oh, hallelujah. But we won't do that. We won't do that. So that's why I say a lot of this that's happening with our young people. And young people, if you listen, you ought to say amen. It's because of y'all adults that won't have tough love and teach them like the Bible say so. Go back and read the first six chapters of Deuteronomy and see the emphasis that uh, Moses was telling the, the, the Israelites how important it was to teach the children. Teach them in the morning. When, when, teach them when you when you're coming in, when you're going out, when, in the evening, teach them. But we just let them go on their own. Let them grow out like a weed in the, out in the yard. Just let them grow wild. Well, I want to tell you this morning, I say it with love. God is holding you responsible. Well, if you have any teenagers, I need to keep you on the prayer list because... 
teenagers today is something to deal with. And that that's the I'm targeting this morning from the teenage to that one that's up to 25. From so 13 to 25. I'm 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 really targeting that group. Now if you got a one in that age range, praise God, or that window uh, uh, of time for his age, then you need to listen up because I know that God specializes in young people. Let's note what happened. First of all, the scripture said Paul is, he in town, he had Troas, and he's teaching, okay? You see early up there in the verses, he's in Troyes. That's the town he was in. They're in this building, all right? And they're up on the third floor, and they minister and praise God. Now, verse 8 tells us that there were many lamps in the upper room where they was gathered. So now, they ain't got electric lights like us now. So let's, let's consider the atmosphere, and, you know, they got these lamps with the wick and, 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 and it, yes, fumes. And Paul just kept, look at verse 7. He spoke to them, continued his message until midnight. Now, now y'all talking about the preacher being long-winded. But now I, I, I take it as I read the whole passage. They was in some kind of like Bible study and uh, uh, Apostle Paul was taking his time, no doubt entertaining their questions and responding and all these things taking place and hit his fellow already near the edge in the window. Probably said, well, I can get some, a little airflow here. And he's sitting there and the scripture said, verse nine, he in the window, this young man, Eutychus was his name. And guess what? His name means favorable. That's right. Fortunate. His name means fortunate. Uh, favorable, huh? Fortunate. Uh, he was sinking in a deep sleep. You know, I look at this passage, I think how many times, and, and I, I just question myself because as I teach a lot of time and if I'm in Bible study and teach I see someone sleep I, I notice it and sometimes I call them out or uh, if someone needs to hey sister sister Jones will you touch sister Flintstone and tell her to wake up because I see she she nodding and <laughs> she about to break her neck you, you know what I'm saying now I, I don't I try not to practice that in a, in a Sunday service up in the pulpit because, you know, I, I don't want to embarrass nobody. So so what are you saying? I, I just really sense within that Paul, their teaching, may have noticed this fella, uh, you know, sort of not know. Huh? Anybody know? So, so, so he sort of just in the one that he just, Paul preaching and he and teaching and he 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 nodding off, huh? And, and and but but Paul didn't bother him, huh? What what are you saying? Y'all gonna get it? Y'all gonna get it? Y'all gonna catch up with preacher this morning? Paul the apostle, he just kept on teaching, and then it said in verse nine. He was overcome by sleep. Now, he on the third floor. He in the window. They said he fell down from the third story. And remember, Dr. Luke is one writing this book. Dr. Luke said he was dead. That's what it said. He was taken up dead. I'm talking literally, physically dead. Call the undertaker, okay? But look at verse 10. I know I told you God specializes. But Paul went down and, and he fell on him and embracing him, he said, 
Do not trouble yourselves for his life is in him. Now, this is what the preacher said, all right? His life is in him. And now when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till daybreak in the party. So what did Paul do? Paul went and braced himself over the man, and the boy came back to life. But did, did you notice this? Verse 12. And they brought the young man in alive. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Verse 9 said he was dead. That's right. But verse 12, praise God, said they brought the young men in alive and they were not a little confident. So what did it say? They was greatly confident. What are you saying? Where you received this today? See, the problem with the young folks, why God can't turn them a lot of their lives around is because soon as God got the young person to the place he want them, where they don't fell and broke their neck, where they don't got into a situation that they can't get out of, when nobody, friends don't forsook them, and won't come to their rescue. Then as a last resort, and yes, a lot of times they don't want to call you, but they call you. They desperate now. And you ain't got enough sense to do like Paul. Just let them break their neck. I ain't talking about litter now. I'm talking about the situation they're in. Let them break their neck. Let them fall out the window. The best thing you can do to them is put the prayer on them. Pray for that teenager. Pray for that young person that God, we praying that God get their attention. Soon as God get their attention, you come to the rescue. Wrong, wrong, wrong. <coughs> Excuse me. So what happened? Well, you see in this story, Paul went down there, went over that young man, braced himself over, and got him up alive. The scripture said they went back home up to the third floor. Paul continued where he left off, continued to teach. Now, why can't you do the same. Don't you know if you put prayer on it and you trust in God for the child? Oh, but preacher, you don't understand my child on drug. Oh, like God don't know. You you don't know, preacher, my child. Oh my, he confused about what gender he is. Like God don't know. God can get they attention. And guess what? Will y'all accept this? Some of y'all won't believe it, but sometimes the child even before God will refuse. Huh? What do you mean? Well, turn with me. Matthew 19. I want to show you something. Because God specializes in young people. It says in Matthew 19, verse 16 to 22. Now, behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? Jesus speaking. Huh? No one is good but one. That is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? <clears throat> Jesus said, you shall not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. 
and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 20. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still like? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Ain't that something? What's the point, preacher? Well, I'm going to tell you. Think about it. Here another, and, and, and the scripture said, another young man. Huh? This was a rich, young ruler. And he came to Jesus, asked him, what would it take to go to heaven or inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him about the commandments. And he responded, he'd been keeping them since he was a little fellow. But Jesus saw something else. And that's what I'm saying, y'all. God know our children. Put prayer on them. But note now, let me remind you, Jesus talking to this young man, and Jesus saw something. He saw that this fellow was caught up in his possessions. You see it in verse 22. He had great possessions. He was caught up in his possessions. Now, Jesus ain't telling everybody to sell what they have. He told this particular fellow that. But why? He was caught up in his possessions. So Jesus said, sell what you have. And then you will have treasure in heaven. He had treasures here on earth like so many people. So they don't need to trust God when they can go to the bank or they can write a check huh? or they can transfer millions here and there. But he said, uh, sell what you have and Give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me. What's the point, preacher? I'm glad you asked. Because verse 22 tells us, and I've had other great Bible teachers do the same as I have done. I have looked throughout the New Testament throughout the Gospels, and I never see in the Scriptures, in the Word of God, where this young fellow surrendered his life and came to Jesus, where he had a change of heart or a change of mind. What are you saying? I'm trying to get over to you if Jesus couldn't persuade this young man. Well, where you think you can do such a great job, huh? What are you saying? All of us, I don't care how much you do pray and all, in no sense that you having high blood pressure, heartaches, you can't sleep at night worrying about these young people. You'll kill yourself. This young man said no to Jesus. Come on, wake up. This is a fight. He said no to Jesus. He rejected Jesus. So you think you can do a better job? As we prepare to close, let me, let me make something clear. I have seen and talked to parents who had got to the point they were so concerned with their child or their young person that it was causing them all kind of anxieties and they couldn't have no kind of peace. I witnessed this the other night. Uh, a, 
elderly woman, and she said her child at this point, past this age, he was. She said he was fifty-one, and she just said, "Uh-uh, I don't trust you, Omelie. Get out of my house." I witnessed this the other night, but let me help you. If you would do like the Apostle Paul. Yeah, keep the young person in prayer. I'm praying for them every day. Lord, those parents who got teenagers, I'm praying for y'all. I'm praying for you that that child sprung out on drugs, that child confused about what gender. Tell my, well, I, I'm a girl, but I want to be a boy. I'm a boy, I want to be a girl. They confuse, that's the devil, huh? And all this other drugs and alcohol and, and and all these other things that the devil got their mind. But will you, this is what I'm asking you to do. Will you do like Paul? Will you, you can be watching him. Just, you, you see it, you see it. But just keep praying. Don't, don't, don't tell him to get out the window. Just keep praying. Do you hear me this moment? Uh-uh. Don't call other people. Uh-uh. You keep praying. Call a name. Say, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm praying for Johnny this morning. I, I, I'm praying for Elise. I'm praying, God, in the name of Jesus. And, and you're going to tell me God to do it. He did it. Go to Luke's. 15, where he did it for the prodigal. And the scripture said when he came to himself, there in the in the hall pen, he came to himself. How many house servants my, my, my father got? And, and I'm hunger here in this hall pen. I, 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 I'm going to go to him and I'm going to confess. I'm going to get Oh, up from here and go back home and confess, Father, I have sinned. I'm no worthy to be called your son, but if you would just make me one of your house servants. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What are you saying? You got to do like the apostle Paul. Hallelujah. Let them break their neck. Let them fall out the window. And God is able to raise them up. Hallelujah. Paul didn't hesitate. He went downstairs, interrupted the Bible study, put it on pause, went downstairs, and, and, and Luke said he was dead. But God raised him up. They went on back up the Bible study. And boy, when Paul finally left, did you see it there? They took that young man home. Hallelujah. Even them at home was glad. Lord, can you imagine the testimony? Can you imagine when they took him home? You ain't telling the parents. You ain't going to believe this. But you know Eutychus tonight was in Bible study and he actually broke his neck and died. Oh, hallelujah. But he's alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Will you do that? God specializes in young people. That's what I'm standing on. See, y'all talk, y'all looking at what all they doing. I, I'm looking at what God's words say. He specializes in young people. If anybody can get young people's attention, whether it's the millenniums, the next gen, I don't care what you name them. God is able to get their attention. Keep praying for them. And remember God specializes. And remember to give thanks. R2 GT. <laughs>